Righto guys, as you might have guessed, we got ourselves a tinny. This episode we're going to run through all the ins and outs of getting a rooftop tinny, weights, costs, how fast it goes, uh, how many people you can put in it. Uh, there is a lot to consider and we definitely found there was a few hurdles when we were looking. So let's get into it. One of the first questions we get when I put this episode out is why didn't we have this on our four month trip? Uh, there is a really good reason, or well, there's two actually. One is in a four month trip with a fair, full family and the kind of travel we did, I don't think we would have used this enough. There were places where we definitely would have loved to have had it, but as far as that whole trip's concerned, most of the time it would have spent its life up on top of the car, getting beaten to death on those corrugated shitty roads. And um, I just didn't, I couldn't justify it, dragging it around Australia to use it a handful of times. It is one of those things, as soon as you get the boat off, probably adds a day to anywhere you're staying. Uh, the other thing is we did not have the payload capacity. Or if we, even if we wanted to risk it, which I'm not that kind of person, I like to you know, try and keep it safe and legal. And I think it is one thing they're gonna crack down on. If I had that on my roof, I reckon you're just sending a signal to be pulled over. Uh, any dual cab on the, on the road with a boat on top of their roof towing anything over an 18 foot dual axle caravan, I would imagine would be a target unless it's an American truck. I know there's guys out there that are doing it properly and legally. I'm not saying there's no one out there doing that, but I am saying you are drawing attention to yourself to be pulled over. And I think we would, it would have pushed us over the limit. So they're the two reasons we didn't have it on the four month trip, but we've got it now. So I'm going to apologize. It's a little bit windy this afternoon. This is a problem with trying to make a YouTube channel with uh, very limited um, equipment. I'm sure we're not, uh, we're not alone in that. Anyway, what did we buy? It is a Quintrex 350, I don't even know what it is. Quintrex 350 Explorer, uh, 15 horse Yamaha two stroke. It's a mangrove jack, aluminium folding trailer and a Rhino rack side loading boat rack. Um, why I got that combination was simply because obviously we bought second hand. There's a lot of things to consider when getting a rooftop boat and budget is going to be probably one of the biggest topics for most people out there. I did start to price up a new package um, and I didn't even finish pricing it up before I realised that it is very hard to get a boat registered for four people in a brand new package these days. So not only was it a lot dearer, I reckon we would have run into oh, uh, well over 10 grand. Let, let's say 15 grand. Like I said, I didn't even finish the exercise because I realised it was so hard to get the right size boat in a four seater. You end up with something too big, too heavy for, for our use. So I did something to really think about and I didn't realise until we started looking, a lot of the older boats are registered for four people. This one's been 3.5 metres long, is registered for four people, or up to 300 kilos worth of occupants which you would think to yourself is too much for a boat like this, but I'm happy to report that it is definitely not. So we just come back from a trip that is hopefully have seen. If you haven't, go and check it out, Farquhar Park. Mate, epic, you gotta watch that, you've gotta go there. So we really give it a good test run out there. We did, I reckon about 35 to 40 Ks of um, running around in the river up and really you know, pushed the limits of what a little boat can do with four people in it. The thing happily sat at 35 k's an hour, which surprised the shit out of me. Um, we towed the kids with it uh, on the body boards. It, it's light enough to, for me and Megan to manage, you know, dragging it to the water and back out of a night. Um, and it's light enough to obviously put on the roof. So a lot of things to consider. Don't just go out there and want to get that brand new package. Um, it may, may not suit your needs. You might have to go to like a four meter or just over a four meter boat to get something that's registered for four people and you're going to be up into the 120 130k range just for the hold these things are around the 70kg mark the motor would be around the 40 to 45kg mark um, i will put the actual specs in in this video here i am guessing those two things i know it's very close to that i know the trailer is 38 kilos and the parts that i have used in the rhino rack probably equate to about 10 to 15 kilos. So the, the, the theory for us was we got rid of the van, as you know, we're getting something smaller, which I have already sort of hinted at that. The ball weight that we will say will pretty much be the weight of the boat, the tinny, the motor, the fuel tank, um, which is, it's another big thing you've got to consider. It's not just the weight of the boat and the motor, it's the fuel tank, the life jackets, um, the anchor, the safety gear, 
there's a lot of little things that you have to have just for safety in a boat too to consider and they do all add up to weight. How did we fit it to the car? Um, everyone's going to be different here but when buying a second hand package don't be scared to have to modify it a little bit to suit your vehicle um, and then that can open up you know what what you are able to purchase. We got a Rhino rack side loader which is more suited to a roof rack style setup we did adapt it to our ladder racks on our Triple M tray. And I will say that the, the Triple M tray does need some bracing in there. We get a little bit of movement in the roof racks. Um, and if you haven't seen the Farquhar episode, go and watch it and you'll know what I mean. We had a little little bit of a disaster. <laughs> um, but it, look, it was my fault uh, and I 100% take responsibility for that. And I was aware of it. I've had these trays my whole life as a tradesman. Um, there is a little bit of flex in them. I will build a frame inside the tray, um, quite a simple thing to fix. And it is one of those things, if you're on a budget and you wanna set something up to suit, you, to suit your needs, these are the things you gotta do. So I'll play a bit of footage here of how we got the Rhino Rack side loader onto a ladder rack system on a tray. Um, we don't have a canopy on our ute, so anyone that wants to fit this style of rack to ladder racks that you already have on your ute, uh, check this out. It wasn't too hard, any handyman can handle it. But right I think I've got a plan. Uh, so these are the pieces that the actual boat sits on. So we definitely need them. Um, and then you've got the other end where the ramp or what the boat slides up onto the roof onto, clip onto those. So we definitely need to get those mounted up on the roof rack somehow. Obviously there's another one that matches that. Then you have this piece here, which is your drill drive or worm drive mechanism the bar that it spins on with the two ropes attached. So that will definitely have to go on as well. So I've got a way to attach these to these Triple M racks, I think, which will be reasonably easy to do. We'll have to make up a couple of little uh, bolts with some big tabs on top. Um, there's some channel that they'll slide into. So I'll get those made up and I'll show you what I mean with that. Right, this is one of the rails that the actual boat sits on. Uh, so they have these plastic end caps in them. They just knock out, they just pushed in, so we knock them out. And then these are the bolts I've come up with that slide inside this channel. So imagine that this track is upside down. That will go down through the original hole where the pins go down through on the triple M trays. Righto, oh these are those pins I'm talking about. I've already undone the nut at the bottom. Pin itself, 16 mil. The bolt coming through the end is eight mil. So we have a 16 mil in the top and eight mil underneath. So we'll have to enlarge that hole to 12 or I'm gonna go 12.5, which means we will still be able to put these back in and use them um, just like they were are now. Uh, I can't see that being a massive issue. And look, once this boat loader goes on, if I can find a way to attach the awnings, it'll probably stay on most of the time. Because the whole point of having a boat is to use it. As simple as that. Go and do the other side and we'll see if this will fit on. Okay, so I've slipped in our 12 mil custom bolt and put them down through the holes in the ladder racks. Uh, I think this is going to be really easy to do. Okay, so I've decided to load this on the driver's side, like I was saying. Um, we'll sort out an awning bracket for the other side as soon as we know that this boat's going to load up all right. Righto, so after we got the rack fitted, uh, look, it may seem like a waste of time and money to a lot of people, but we spent a lot of time polishing Lafroy. Uh, Lafroy being the name of the boat, the kids named it after South and North Lafroy, just below Exmouth. It is one of the places, or probably the pinnacle of where we should have had a boat on our fourth up trip. So the kids come up with that, think it's quite a funny name because there was Lafroy, North Lafroy and South Lafroy, so depending on where you sit, um, yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an inside family joke, but anyway. So anyway, we, we do take pride in the things we own and we give it a polish and got a new set of stickers for the side of it. They did cost us a little bit, but they bloody look awesome and he did a fantastic job. Thanks, Anthony. Um, we do have a little bit of our own branding. We didn't want to go silly with it. And obviously you got to put the Red J numbers back on it. Um, it's one of those things that making something look respectable like that, one, um, we are proud of what we own and you know we like it to look nice. Two, I think we're actually adding value. When you go to sell something, um, if it looks respectable, it makes it easier to sell. And while you own it, why not have it looking good as well? There's no point just cleaning it up just to sell it. That sort of seems to be what always happens. So we used Ali Cleaner and then we really polished it. Uh, I wasn't gonna, but like I said, we got a bit carried away. Um, 
and I'm still getting carried away rambling on. Let's roll the footage. Freaking hot. Right, so we got the boat off the trailer because we're going to use a product called Ali Bright. Um, I haven't used this particular product before, but I have used Ali Cleaner. And you don't want to get this stuff on any anything that's been anodized or anything that basically is an aluminium or stainless steel because it will eat the coating off. It's just a um, diluted acid wash, really. So. Anyway, that's what I'm using, um, and then if it comes up really good, you'll know if you use that. So, let's go. about how I fitted it we've spoken about why you buy a second-hand one because of being registered for four people um, look that's not going to apply to everyone I realize that it's very important to us obviously having four people in the family uh, the trailer was also a really big draw card for me being a 38 kilo all alloy mangrove jack trailer I think those trailers retail for nearly three thousand dollars brand new um, and they are registered to do 100 k's an hour on the highway I will say however I wouldn't do that on a regular basis um, I did tow it about 30 k's home and it did okay uh, but you've got to keep in mind that these trailers do not have any suspension in them whatsoever so if you hit a big pothole it's airborne and I think over time if you really hammered that trailer up and down the highway or on any kind of roads uh, all the pins and the mechanisms would wear on the aluminium and you'd soon go through that trailer and that's not what it's designed for it's designed to use on your holidays when you're away having fun you can chuck it in the back of the ute and then top to the boat ramp. So keep that in mind, bloody good bit of gear though. Um, and look, I, I mentioned they're about $3,000 brand new. Let's get into the price. What did we pay for this whole setup? Keeping in mind it is a 15 horsepower, two stroke Yamaha, arguably the best outboard motor ever made. Um, there's probably some haters there. I reckon they're up there with the 79 series, okay? <laughs> no of that. Look, they are a really good motor, super reliable. I've owned a Yamaha two stroke before. Um, I've owned Yamaha, Yamaha motorbikes, they're just bulletproof. So the whole package to me was Quintrex, Yamaha, Mangrove Jack Trailer and Rhino Rack Boatloader, all really good brand stuff, close to home and I picked it up all for $6,000. So if you really look hard enough and keep waiting on Marketplace, you will find something that fits your budget and weight and requirements. Don't just rush out and buy something brand new because it may not suit your needs anyway. So we were stoked to pick that up for $6,000, boats registered, trailers registered, um, and it was yeah just ready to go. Look, you've probably heard me ramble on enough. If you haven't seen the Farquhar episode, our, our latest travel episode, and the winds get really bad, go out and check that out. And don't forget, you only live once. Get out there and enjoy it. Buy yourself a tinny. We did sick. <laughs>